So, so we have already looked at some typing rules, but consider this particular typing rule which involves a variable. So let's say I have a typing rule which says x is a variable. Then what should be the type of x? All right, and maybe I want to give it a name var. Now, recall that in our abstract syntax tree, we only have this information that x is a variable. We don't really have information about what is the type of x, how was it declared, and so on. Because recall that the abstract syntax tree is formed using a context-free grammar. And this kind of information about the type of x, etc., is basically coming from the context of where x is being used. And so I cannot actually just define a type for x unless I know what is the context in which x appeared. And so I really don't know the answer to this, uh, this question. And so I need to have some kind of an environment. I need to basically say that this is the current environment. And based on this, I will be able to give uh, assign a type to a variable like x. So I'm going to define the notion of a type environment. And a type environment gives types for free variables. Now I'm defining uh, another new term. I'm introducing a term called free variables. What is a free variable? A variable is free in an expression if it is not defined within the expression. All right. So for example, the expression x, it doesn't contain a definition of x, it's just use of x. And so that would be a free variable. So let's look at free variables with some examples. So is the variable x free in the expression x? The answer is yes, we just answered it. In fact, let me just make it a little bit more, a little bit different. Is the variable x free in the expression one plus x? And the answer is still yes, because x hasn't been defined. Is, x, is variable x free in the expression x equals zero? The answer is again yes. x is being assigned a value, uh, which is just an expression, and uh, it's been assigned the value zero. But there's no definition of x in our C-like language. Uh, the definition is used uh, is basically done using a declaration of the type of x and then x. For example, I'll say int x or bool x or a pointer x or something like that. And so this is still the answer is still yes. All right. Is variable x free in the expression int x x equals zero and the whole thing inside a new scope? Now recall that in our language, this whole thing is considered as one expression. And inside the expression, we are doing a declaration and some statement, which is the body. And is x a free x, uh, variable in this? So by x, I really am referring to this particular usage of x, right? Or, or this particular usage of x. So th these are usages of x. And, uh, and so is the, are these usages free? The answer is no, all right? Because x is being defined here and then being used. So it's not a free variable. It's part of the expression, all right? It's being because it's being defined and used within the expression. Now, is x a free variable in expression int y equals one and x equals x plus y? So here inside the expression, I'm defining a new variable y, and then I'm saying x equals x plus y. So is y a free variable in this expression? The answer is no, just like it is not a free variable, just just by the previous argument. Is x a free variable in this expression? The answer is yes, because x is not being defined here. It's just being used here, all right? So, so th that's the idea of a free variable. A type environment is a function from object identifiers like x to their types, all right? And, uh, okay, so that's what a type environment is. It's just a map or a function from object identifiers, with object names, to their types, all right? And so we're going to, uh, assume that we have such an environment available and we are going to change our uh, our claims from just saying that it is provable that E is provable, e, expression E has type T. Instead, we are going to have a sentence of the following form, O turnstile operator E's colon T, which is supposed to be read as under the assumption that free variables have the types given by O where O represents the type environment. So under the assumption that free variables have the types given by O, it is provable that E is of type T. 
right? So the only thing I've done is I have added one more, uh, you know, hypothesis on the left side of the turnstile operator, and my new judgments or claims or sentences are going to have this particular form, O turnstile E colon T. And this is, once again, it's read as under the assumption that free variables have the types given by O, it is provable that E is of type T. So this part, it is provable that E is of type T is just like earlier. The only change is in this uh, blue uh, phrase under the assumption that free variables are the types in, given by O. So existing rules actually still hold. Uh, all our rules hold. For example, here's one rule that says if I is an integer literal, for example, if I is one, then under an arbitrary environment O, it is provable that I is of type int. And this is my revised rule int. The only difference between the previous version and this version is that I now have an O on the left of the turnstile operator. And which says under the environment O, it is true that I is of type int. Now notice because this environment O is arbitrary, there is no hypothesis that constrains what O should be. It pretty much means that under any environment O, I is of type int if I is an integer literal. So under any environment O, 1 is of type int, 2 is of type int, and so on. And so, you know, we can use O um, as, a, as an arbitrary ident uh, type environment, uh, just an ident identify for an arbitrary type environment as being used here. Here's another rule, which was uh, for addition of two integers. So Everything remains the same, except that everywhere I have a typing judgment, I have an O on the left of it. So it says, if under a type environment O, it is provable that E1 is of type T1, so that T1 is a subtype of int. And under the same type environment, if it is true, if it is provable that E2 is of type T2, and T, where T2 is a subtype of int, then under the same type environment O, it is true that E1 plus E2 is of type int. Now the, I mean, clearly the only change here is that I have put O everywhere where there was a typing judgment, but there is uh, there is a meaning to it, saying that it needs to be the same O in all the three places. So it needs to be O here, O here, and then the conclusion says that uh, under the same type environment O, E1 plus E2 is of type n. So this is, these are the only changes that we have to make to our typing rules to be able to accommodate uh, a type environment. And notice that even in the addition rule, the O can be arbitrary. It can be an arbitrary environment. The only restriction here is that it needs to be, the, you know, it, it, it needs to be derivable or provable that E1 is of type T1 and E2 is of type T1 under the same type environment O. And the conclusion also uses the same type environment O the same arbitrary type environment O. Apart from the existing rules, we'll ha add the new rules because of the type environment. And here is a rule which basically gives a type to a variable X. So if the type environment maps a variable X to an arbitrary type T, then under the type environment O, it is provable that X is of type T reference. And this is my variable rule. This is a new rule that is being introduced because of type environments. And notice that inside the type environment, I'm keeping an association with the X, with a variable name, to its value type. Whereas in the typing judgment, I am assigning a reference type to the variable X. Recall that because the reference type is a subtype of the va uh, corresponding value type, X can be used anywhere a value, a term of value type was expected, but it can also be used in other places. For example, it can be used in the LHS of an assignment. This kind of rule uh, we're going to see next will be useful when we are going to try to type expressions that involve scopes, new scopes and new declarations, as we're going to see next. But once again, if the type environment maps a variable x to a type t, then it is true that under that under that same type environment O, it is provable that x is of type t reference. Okay, so now let's see that rule, uh, you know, being applied 
to get more uh, elaborate ty uh, ty to get types for more elaborate expressions. In particular, I'm interested in typing this expression where there's a new scope and a variable x is declared with type t0 in the new scope. And then the body of the scope is E, separated by a semicolon from the declaration. Recall that inside the body of uh, this scope, I, am, I want to be able to assign values to x, and it should still be a type correct expression. So when will I? Uh, so when will this be a type correct expression? Well, this this whole expression here, this whole expression here, will be a type correct expression if E is a type correct expression under an environment where X has been mapped to T zero. And if under that, in, under that updated environment where x has been mapped to t0, if e evaluates to type, or if e is of type t, then this whole expression is also of type t. So that's what this rule says. It says, under an arbitrary environment O, this whole expression evaluates to type t if under O updated with a mapping from x to t0. This is the syntax for t0 for x. So in other words, update O such that x, the identified x now maps to t0. If x did not already exist in O, then a new mapping is created from x to t0. If x already existed in O, then that mapping is overwritten. What, so let's say x was mapping to some arbitrary type tx, then that tx is overwritten with t0. That's what the syntax means. I'm going to explain that later on as well. Under the updated environment, if E is evaluates to type T, then under the original environment, this whole expression evaluates to type T. And we call this rule the declaration rule. And because we are not initializing the uh, initial value of X, we say declaration without initialization or declaration no in it. Now, what does O T for X mean? So here we are using O T zero for X, but in general, O t for x represents a function such that O t for x applied to the variable x just gives me t. So that's what the updating the mapping for x to t means. But for all other variables y, such that y is not equal to x, O t of e, uh, this, this expression here uh, maps, or this function here maps y to whatever O mapped y to. So uh, if uh, so this is basically what O with X with T O updated with T for X represents. It represents a function such that it maps X to T, but it maps all other variables Y not equal to X to whatever the original function O mapped it to. And with that, we have been able to, with, with the help of this function O updated with T for X, we have been able to write the typing rule for our declaration no in it.